So hello and welcome back. This is actually the second time I'm actually going to film some of this. Yesterday I'd done quite a bit of work on this quad and my GoPro didn't record it properly. It came up as a corrupted file and there was no way I could recover it either so that was disappointing. I'd done about three hours work on this and it was disappointing to see that a lot of that footage was lost but we can run through real quickly what I've done. First of all um, for any of you that haven't watched the first two episodes, you kind of have to go back and watch those to kind of see the whole process. But we have done the back axle, we rebuilt that. We have done um, a lot of work on the front as well, and the front steering, and that's all completed now as well. But since that, I have removed the fuel tank, which literally is just one bolt, and then it slides backwards and just lifts straight off. Um, also, I've removed the carburetor. Now, to remove the carburetor, um, two juvie clips and a couple of hoses including an air breather hose and then your fuel hose obviously coming from your tank valve into the side of your carburetor and a couple of little small things like that and your carburetor is off. I had that all recorded that's the bit that I was missing but anyway I'll show you it's been all put back together again all you have to do is do the whole process in reverse. But you might ask why am I taking all this out and why did I remove the tank and why did I strip off the carburetor? Main reason for that is I'm going to clean the carburetor. The carburetor's full of oil corrosion and stuff inside. The choke never worked on this quad, so it doesn't even have a cable. And someone put a wire down into the carburetor. I'll show you that as I'm doing the work on it, um, just so they could pull it manually. And that itself wasn't working because the choke needle or the little plunger that goes up and down was completely seized solid in the carburetor. Um, and there was no way that was going to work. Next thing I done was I disconnected the starter, just take off the positive off the starter. And then I obviously took off my plug lead, which I shoved in there. Um, then just disconnected the stator and the ERT, but I didn't actually take the ERT off the engine. There's the ERT there, although it is corroded, I'm going to have to clean up that ERT completely. So I just cable tied everything there and left as much on the engine as possible. Then we have an air breeder that comes up here. Now I cover everything with plastic and a cable tie so no dirt or dust in it and can get into the head of the engine or into the bottom of the engine itself through the breeder um, hose here at the top. So I disconnected them pipes. There's them there, out of the way, and a wee T-junction there. The process of why I'm doing this may have become obvious. I'm going to pull the engine, taking the engine out of this quad completely. And the reason for doing that is the frame needs a lot of work underneath. And there's no way I can do that work properly with the engine in the quad. I need it out so I can get in from both sides, just access basically, I can get in from both sides and fix that frame properly because it really does need, the more I look at it, it needs a lot of work underneath. Another thing that it needs is the top end needs a rebuild. First of all, there's a bad rattle inside and a bad tapping noise in the head. That's not uncommon sometimes in these. There's a little guy in there, which is a cam chain adjuster. They can be completely seized, but there could be a lot of play in the cam uh, chain itself, and that could be rattling inside the head. And sometimes adjusting that can actually fix the problem. But in this case, we have a lot of blue smoke coming out as well. So I'm thinking it's going to need at least a set of rings on the piston itself and just have a quick look at the bore and see what everything is like. Now, I was originally going to do that job myself because um, I've done a few of them before and it's not hugely complicated to do, but I don't think I'm going to do it on this one because time is of the essence here and I've just so much work to do and when my work is finished, I have so many runs to do with kids and things as well. So I don't have the time I used to have to work at this kind of thing. So when I take the engine out, I may send it off to a guy that I know and he might do the top end rebuild for me. I was planning to kind of do it myself but you know sometimes you just have to know when enough is enough and allow someone to give you a hand along the way so the bottom end should be okay these engines are fairly bulletproof but remember it's probably a 1988 quad whether it had an engine rebuild I'd say it did at some stage and um, top end as well I would pretty much be quite confident it probably has had it in its lifetime but anyway that's what we're going to do today we're going to pull this engine out and um, one thing I will say, I've done one of these engines before, I've took it out before, and I kind of remember the whole process to it. Nothing complicated about it. One thing I will say is, just be careful here. I've opened this juby clip, because this is your shaft, basically, your drive shaft, running down onto your back diff on your quad. Loosen this side here, and push the rubber back. You can see the shaft, the shaft is in there, it's a bit dark now, but the shaft, almost like a PTO shaft, it's in there. I've heard of people before opening these two studs. Don't open them studs, because what will happen is, this here will separate and in here you have your cogs and your gears and everything will collapse and you will be in an awful state 
when you do that because everything will collapse and then you'll really have to spend a few quid getting someone to put everything back to where it's supposed to be so don't open them two studs don't be tempted to do it at all you don't need to what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove the gear now you don't have to fully remove that if you don't want but i'm going to take it out for handiness take off the foot pegs on both sides just access we're going to take off the exhaust and we have a couple of little brake cables for removing the far side let's get at it Just so I don't lose any bolts, any time you can put them back into wherever they came out of, do that. It'll save you a lot of time running around looking for the bolts, <laughs> the proper bolts that is, when you put it back together. Oh, turns out the bolts on this side, different size. Me thinking there are 12. Yep. So this is your brake pedal here, and you might have to remove the dipstick to do this, but that should push back out of the way like that. Now once again, I'm going to do the very same thing and that's going to put all these bolts back into the holes here so I don't lose them. So, the next job we're at is we have to remove this cable here. Now this cable runs up to your handlebars and that is what puts the quad into reverse. So you move the handlebars, any of you have a Honda quad will understand. You pull the lever back, push this button down, flick it forward again and that engages this cable here which needs to be replaced as well. You can see it's badly corroded around here. And that runs the whole way down here. This little mechanism pulls that and that's what allows the quad to be flicked into reverse. Yeah. Got a little plug socket here, you just pull out. Another one up here. There we go. Right, so we're motoring on rightly. That's more or less everything disconnected. The only thing I suppose we're going to do next is supposed to drain the oil. You don't have to drain the oil necessarily before you take it out, but it's much easier to do it when it's on the quad. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to drop the oil out and then we're going to go through all the mounts and loosen all of those and hopefully just lift our engine out. All right, so that's that drained out. Doesn't be a whole pile of oil in these. So at least that's another little job done. We put the sump plug back in and we start going around our mounts. So our mounts is here, one here, one here, and there's one here at the back. So let's get them loosened. I'm coming out this side and put this on just to hold it. Way in there for a minute. Do 
just the one more to get and that's the one down here at the bottom it tends to be the one that's always the problem Now I can safely say we have all our mounts loosened. Now someone might say, how on earth did you get them loosened so easy? Because they're always seized and we can never get ours to even move. Never mind loosen. WD-40. Over the past month, every so often when I'm passing it, we spray WD-40 over all the joints that I know I'm going to be loosening. And it works an absolute dream. So that's why that stuff was all penetrated. And I can even see the way it penetrated right into the bolts. So that's the reason why they're loosened so easy. Now we have to take them out and the big job is lifting this brute which is a nice size of an engine out of this frame i'm gonna pop these bolts out push them there they are that's that one out and the one in here i'm gonna loosen these out now completely i'm just gonna have a double check around to make sure we're not missing anything one thing i do want to do i want to tie these cables up out of the way just put a cable tie around that keep them out of my sight and uh, so the last thing you need is them lapping around it and we're ready to lift it out the engine Just to show you before we take the engine out any further, that is how that shaft comes out. Just basically think of it as a PTO shaft on machinery. It works the exact same way. You don't need to open anything there. It will pull apart once you have the engine removed. One thing I didn't do, and I should have done on video, was show you that you remove this mount, these guys here, that sit like that. You must remove those as well, um, or your engine won't be fit to slide out. So just make sure you remove these plates here on both sides, and that will free up your engine. It wouldn't go amiss to put some grease on that. That is for sure. She is dry, but not worn. Nowhere on the splines, just very dry. And there we have it. We have a quad with no engine. Just shows you the process. Take your time. Take loads and loads and loads of photos and there's no reason why you can't tackle it yourself. Although it is only a 300, there's still a bit of weight behind that engine. So just take your time and watch the fingers. Just check everything twice to make sure that everything is disconnected right. And it will come out. And that saves you a bit of labour if you are sending it off to get something done with it or need to take it out for some reason. That will save you a lot of labour if someone else doing it themselves. Now, I would say a 500cc like I have in the other quad, I don't recommend you touch that one. There's a lot complicated. It's not massively more complicated, but there's a lot more work in it. And it definitely is a lot more heavier than a 300. Right, so it's a couple of days later. It's actually Tuesday now. That was Sunday, by the way, that I was filming that. So you can see the engine's gone. It's away there yesterday evening. So it's a way off to get looked at. I thought I was going to strip it down for me and have a look and see what has to be done to the head of the engine. The bottom half, I'm pretty sure, is okay. Them 300cc engines, they're relatively bulletproof. They're a very, very robust engine. That's why so many people liked the 300, the big red, uh, and the one that followed after. I think it was the four track. That followed after it and people just loved them because they were so easy to work on so simple yet so reliable and that's what people loved about them so it's a way off it'll get whatever it needs he's going to ring me at the weekend and he's going to give me a list of whatever it needs and whatever it needs it'll get it because i don't want to have to take that engine out again i want to leave it perfect and um, so that it'll work for years to come now we get a better look at the frame our frame is in what would you say a midland condition it needs a bit of work it needs quite a bit of work to fix it right and um, really and truly this whole cross member here has to be completely cut out and replaced we have to keep our mount for our engine make sure it's put back in the right place to mount our engine back up again it's fine it's not rusted at all actually it's just this cross member here is gone this part of the frame here is not even connected although they're okay they're not badly rusted and um, so we'll probably have to extend them and weld them back onto a new cross member that we put on here uh, there's holes here coming, which is not uncommon where the foot pedals are, because what happens is you get moisture that goes in here and sits here the whole time and just eats into that part. So that part's going to probably have to be replaced as well. There's a quite a bit of work in it. Um, to leave it right and leave it safe, there's a nice little bit of work to be done here. This panel here has obviously been added to it because the plastics don't fit into it. Everything's just wrong about it, and it's very roughly done. It was obviously just done to strengthen up the frame, but it didn't do it any favours, because you can see here rust coming through this part here, which that's not good. You don't like to see that. So all that rust is going to have to be cut out, um, treated so that it doesn't spread any further, and a brand new plate put in there. 
And I've got thinking about it and what way I'm going to approach it. And I kind of have a plan now put in place of how we're going to do that. But that'll come up in the next video. Um, because I want to get some custom work done to this as well. I don't want to just leave it factory. Because it has a couple of things that I'd like to improve on. And one of those things is when the pedals goes on, I want to make some sort of a footwell that comes out here. When you have your foot on the pedal, if your foot ever come off it, you can step on this side here or this side here and your foot's not going to go down, ever go down into the ground. Because believe it or not, it happens. And um, on the newer quads, you have a plastic well that stops that from happening. But these just didn't have them. They weren't just as advanced as what the new ones are now. So it is a safety thing. So that's what I'm going to try and get a set of footwells made. Just come out here and tidy that area up. Another couple of things we need to get is we need to get a new latch over here. We'll probably end up buying a new latch. I just priced one online last night and they're not hugely expensive. So we'll get a brand new full mechanism for there. Everything over here is okay. Nothing wrong there, nothing needs to be touched. Cable going to the reverse. You can see here it's all opened up. It's all bubbled. There's obviously rust coming underneath um, the cover. So we're going to replace that reverse cable. We have our new brake cable already run and um, we just have to hook that up on the back. Now we're going to push it out to show you some of the stuff that we're going to do to the front of it. Now this plate here was obviously attached. That shouldn't be on that flat plate. That was obviously welded on. Um, I had to cut off a piece that was there which was a tow bar basically fitted to the front. Just looked dog ugly so I cut it off. So we might make some sort of a bumper for here coming across. Um, and tidy that up or do something with that. Another thing is I'm going to be addressing these front lights. Now there's a kit you can get to convert these into LED. I don't like the kit because it takes away the natural look of the 300. I don't want to take away too much of the original look. So I don't really want to go there. So I have a brand new front light for this one. This one here is cracked open. You might be able to see that but it is actually the lens is just hanging there and it's all corroded inside. That one there is perfect. Um, so that's why the wet has got in there, it's just got a crack. So we have a brand new one sitting on the shelf ready for it. So my idea basically is to put a LED bar nicely mounted onto the handlebars. So rather than having it here on the front or mounting it down here or somewhere, at least in the handlebars, when you turn your handlebars, the light will be directed um, whatever way you're going. And it just works much better. I have that on the 500 and I think it's a much better job with the big headlight that it has. So we're going to do something there just to perk up the lights. So when we get the engine back, get the frame fixed that's going to make a huge difference to that quad then the rest is just basically down to cosmetics and i know a lot of you are asking me am i going to keep it original or what i'm going to do it's going to look very different when it's finished we have come up with a plan that we want to do with it the entire thing just to make it look unique the girls picked it themselves and i 100 percent agreed with it it should look pretty cool when it's finished and no way i like what it does now i'll also be going through when the engine's away fixing this that's not chewed Something rubbed that um, and just broke that wire. The rest of the wires are okay. So it's only a matter of me soldering that wire back up. I'll check the rest of the loom when I'm at it and then just cover that back up again. That should be fine. All the block connectors, all that stuff is all good. The rims are actually fine. They're in fairly good condition. No real big kinks around. And if you look there, there's no kinks around the side really. One little dent there we can take out easily. We'll get them sandblasted and repainted. I did ask a pole whether they be black or silver. But we now know what we're going to do. And you'll not find out for a wee while yet, but it won't be long because this is going to move a lot faster now because we want to get this finished. Um, I have a young guy going to do a bit of work for me over the summertime, and this quad will work well for him for just doing little bits of spraying and things like that. And this quad will suit him, let him work away with it. The only one thing that I can't find is on the foot pedals that come out here, there's this guy here which goes down basically and holds the back fenders from wobbling around or hitting against the wheel. Now these are quite easy to replace. The only problem is I don't have anything to go by. They're rotted out, they're completely gone on the far side and there should be more to this and going down here and it's all missing. Just completely rotted out and gone. So if anybody knows where there's an old set somewhere that isn't completely rotted out that at least we could trace it and make a brand new set from, I would really love to hear from you because that would help us out a lot. Um, because it's very hard to make something new when you don't have anything to go by. Or even knows where you can get this new, I'd happily buy it. Because it would make a big difference to that there. And it's something that is needed to keep them whole plastics in place. So I'm going to leave it there for now. We're working on this girl here now. That's getting her up and running. That's the next thing. And we have plans already put in place for that. We have a few bits and pieces that actually just came this morning. That's going to help us get the engine running. So now that we have longer evenings and have a wee bit more time to do jobs, we're going to get cracking onto that very soon. So that's it, I'm gonna leave it there for now. There'll be lots in the next episode. So if you don't wanna miss that, don't forget, hit that sub button, give us a like. Until the next one, we'll talk to you again.